Today's video is a guide on everything you need to know about the scout class in Battlefield 1. EA invited me out to a BF1 capture event. I took this opportunity to solely play the scout class in Battlefield 1 and make sure I knew and had as much information as possible on the sniper aspect of this game. So first up we have the customized screen. You notice there's three different types of snipers and on each sniper there's two options for each scope. All the snipers currently available have the same rounds per minute, however they all perform differently at different ranges. The graph on the customized screen shows you the bullet damage and the bullet drop of each rifle. On the damage drop line you can see that there's a bump in the line. This is what's called the sniper's sweet spot, meaning that if you hit an enemy at that range, you have a potential to do much more damage than a normal shot at any other range. The first rifle on the list is the Russian 1895. The Russian sniper is the medium range sniper of the three snipers available. The scope I'm using now is the MA scope, which is roughly similar to a 6x scope from Battlefield 4. The second option for this rifle is TR, which actually removes the scope completely and increases the RPM significantly. This in theory actually makes the Russian sniper the fastest rounds per minute sniper in the game, however you have to use the TR scope. Alongside using the TR scope, which is essentially iron sights, you can also access the iron sights with a scoped sniper rifle, but we couldn't work out what the shortcut was. I forgot to record any footage with the TR scope, but I reckon it probably doubles the rounds per minute. Next up we have the Gua 98, which has the longest range sweet spot of any of the sniper rifles available. From the graph it also states that it has the least bullet drop, which means that it keeps its velocity better over range. In Battlefield 1, snipers do not only just have bullet drop and bullet velocity, they also lose velocity over range so I imagine different snipers will lose velocity at different ranges. The scope I'm using on this rifle is abbreviated to SH, which is similar to an ACOG or a 4 times scope. However, unlike BF4, you can actually still steady this 4 times scope. The second option for this sniper is the same scope as the Russian sniper, which is the MA, which is a 6 times scope, as I mentioned before. This rifle seemed to me to have the most consistent velocity of any of the rifles, which is why I used it most. This is actually the rifle that I used during the live stream, and it seemed to be the, my go-to rifle at the time. Both the Russian and the Gua both have five bullets to each clip. Weirdly enough, it's actually sometimes better to reload a clip once it's completely finished than it is to reload a clip halfway through because when you reload the clip once it's finished, you instantly put in five bullets, whereas if you shoot four bullets and then try and reload, you place each bullet in one by one. You'll see this throughout the gameplay. And lastly, and by no means least, we have the Mark III rifle, which is considered the close range sniper rifle in the Scout class. This rifle has the closest range sweet spot and is also the only rifle to have 10 rounds in a clip. This rifle again has access to the SA scope, which is the same scope that I was using on the Gua. It can also use a rather basic scope as well, similar to an iron sight, almost like an upgraded iron sight. This was abbreviated to CA. This rifle definitely ended up being one of the favorites for me because having 10 rounds in close quarters was definitely the answer to having multiple enemies around you and not having to reload. After using all three of the rifles, I actually didn't feel too much of a difference between each one. What I'm trying to say is you can use any of the three snipers at any range effectively. So just because you're using the Mark III at long range, it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to hit anyone, it's just going to be more difficult than using the Gua, which is made for that range. Obviously what DICE wants you to do is pick a sniper depending on the type of mode or the type of map that you're playing on. At this point in time, I found it very difficult to hit anyone over 200 to 300 meters, but we might be seeing uh, a longer range sniper rifle in the game when it comes out, so we don't know what's to come in the future. 
Up next, we're talking pistols. So at the moment, I only have access to the M1911 and the P08. I actually ended up using the P08 purely for stats alone. If you compare the P08 to the M1911, the P08 has a better damage drop off and more bullets in a clip. The pistols are very effective at close range. It takes around four or five shots to kill an enemy with the pistol alone. They also work very effectively at dispatching enemies that you've hit once in the chest with your sniper rifle. When using any rifle, at most close ranges, you're going to be doing around 80 to 90 damage to the chest. So only one shot from your pistol is needed to just do that last bit of damage to finish them off. At the moment, there's only two gadgets to choose from, which is the flare gun, which is used for spotting, and also the K-bullets, which is the anti-vehicle element of the Scout class. I didn't record it, but the K-bullets are basically bullets that you load into your gun that do considerably more damage to vehicles. The flare gun works by revealing any enemies that are in its vicinity as it flies through the air. Enemy players in the area will be spotted and will show up on your minimap for a short period of time. The grenades are pretty self-explanatory. They basically all act like their Battlefield 4 counterparts. If you want to pause the video to read each of the descriptions, I recommend doing that. The only ones not similar to BF4 are the gas grenade, which acts similar to the grenade in Hardline, and the light anti-tank grenade, which is a grenade that you throw at a tank and it explodes very shortly afterwards and does about 20 to 30% of the damage of a vehicle. I would argue that a scout sniper would only be able to take out a vehicle using both the K bullets and the light anti-tank grenade. And finally we come to melee weapons. Now it seems that each of the melee weapons even has their own stats. On top of the stats, you also have the extras row, which shows you other features that your melee weapon can perform. Initial melee attacks do 80 damage, with a two hit kill overall. However, if you attack an enemy from behind, it will do a short animation and kill them instantly. And of course, alongside your normal melee weapon, every rifle is equipped with a bayonet. You can perform a bayonet charge by sprinting and then pressing the melee key. Once a bayonet charge has been initiated, you cannot stop until you hit an enemy, you hit an obstacle, or you simply run out of energy. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll be making more BF1 videos in the future. If you have any other comments on anything else I might have missed or anything you want to know, just send me a comment down below and I'll try and answer it. Thanks for watching and rate the video if you enjoyed it. Cheers.